What do you see when you see? Who is it? Happy when you see that picture. He's happy, little boy. Young. Yeah. Fun. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> <Fine. laughs> okay. Well, every day he struggles with Asperger's, and that's a form of autism. I bet you wouldn't see that when you look at him, right? Um, there's no cure. He can only hopefully grow out of it. Um, so every day he struggles. What um, Asperger's is? It's like it's a disorder that. He's 15 years old, but he has the mentality of about a seven-year-old, so it's pretty sad. And um, his appearance, as you guys can see, he doesn't appear to have the disorder, but he does, unfortunately. And I did mine on disorder discrimination and how it's portrayed today and what it was like in the past. Um, my name is Meg McNeil, and I'm a student here. And um, what are we covering today? The history of the disor of disorders, how disorders are portrayed today, and what the future may hold considering the past and the present. Where did it all start? I don't know if you guys have taken Psych 100, um, but in the past, the ancient views, it was viewed as supernatural, like it was some kind of like spirits, magic kind of thing. Um, they believed in treatments like cutting out pieces of your skull to let the evil spirits out if they feel like that wasn't working, they would either do exorcism, or they whip you, or starve you, or they would um, constantly dip you in waters, like all these crazy things spin you, like, um, and this continued for years and years. Um, Greek times it continued um, until Hippocrates, he taught that illness has natural causes, it's not supernatural, um, and that abnormal behavior is internal physical problems, they thought. Middle Ages and the Renaissance, it's still continued. Um, behaviors were interpreted between good and evil still. Uh, at this time, abnormal uh, behavior increased because, um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen, uh, you guys know anything about Bethlehem Hospital, Bedlam? Have you guys heard anything about it? Okay. Um, this was mad madness, uh, tarantism, and lycanthropy. They believed that they were animals at one point, like if there was a lot of hair on their body, they were convinced that they were like wolves and it's, it's pretty intense. Um, also, treatment in hospitals began, Trinity Hospital in England. Um, from 1400 to 1700, um, there, the, the evil view thing was declining slowly. Uh, Johann Weyer uh, started with his views and witchery, and that's when Bedlam started. And this picture down here is Bedlam. They would chain people. I was going to show you guys a video from History Channel. They play it out pretty good, but it was like 40 minutes long, and that's not. <laughs> but anyway, they would chain people to walls. You would walk in there, and people would be chained to walls. Anybody with like a mental disorder. Um, if a child was born with a disorder in the past, and they or like a, de a deformation, they would be thrown to the wolves when they were younger. It's pretty crazy and scary and sad. Um, but that just lets you see like what kind of like what happened in the past with people with disorders. Um, 19th century, it was still going on. They started out with techniques and devices, like in the corner down there. They would lock people into chairs and leave them there. And underneath that man, there's a bedpan, and they would leave them there and until they felt like their bodily fluids went back to normal. Um, they would lock people in cages. They would hang them from things and spin them around. And there was a lot of crazy things. Um, asylums started at this time, um, more moral treatments where people would, um, like, like how we have today, like psychologists and like talking and all that, um, but then it started changing. Again, it was back and forth in the past years. Um, hospitals became overpopulated. There wasn't enough staff, so at this time, like, there were, hospitals were filled with people. Um, uh, as years increased, um, we started getting medications. Um, that's Sigmund Freud. Um, we had a lot of new medications coming out. Uh, they weren't very, they weren't obviously as good as today's medication, but they did what they had to do, I guess. <laughs> um, but they deinstitutionalized people. So all those people in those hospitals, they let go, whoever they felt didn't need to be there. And so there was a really big decrease in uh, numbers. Um, I'm going to play you guys a clip.
around 10% of life, uh, percent of the world's population, or 650 million people live with a disability, whether you can see it or not. Um, they are the world's largest minority. Um, in countries with life expectancies over 70 years, individuals spend on average about eight years, per, or 11.5% of their lifespan living with disabilities. Um, in most OECD countries, women report higher incidence of disabilities than men. In many disabilities, women are more at risk than men. In many cases, women are more like at risk for a lot of things than men. 90% um, of children with disabilities in developing countries do not attend school. For every, ten, uh, for every ch child killed in warfare, three are injured and permanently disabled. Research indicates that violence against children with disabilities occurs at annual rates at least 1.7 times greater than for their non-disabled peers. Um, how many have ever like, used one of these words, even if it was like joking to one of your friends? Like, my psychology teacher told me that, you know, whenever she would yell at us, whenever we use like word, any of these words, because it's it's wrong, and you call somebody like psychotic. Or you think like, oh, you're so stupid, you know, like, you don't think about like, you don't know what if that person has even the smallest disability, like you could be hurting them, you know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, I know if somebody said that to me and I had a disability, and or any type of disability, I would be upset by that. And I never realized that, so I try to control what I say. Um, for instance, I'll tell you guys an example. Um, the boy that I showed you on the first page, he, um, that's my ex-boyfriend's brother. And one day he told me, he said, he called me up and he said, I feel so bad. And I said, why? He said, because Andrew came home and some kid called him, um, blank word, retarded. And he was crying. It was his first day of high school when he was called that. And he was, you know, he was nervous to begin with. Who was nervous on the first day of high school, you know? And so to be like hurt that way in the beginning of your first day of high school, that's, that's painful. And you feel like you're not making it through high school after that, you know? But the next week, um, because for him, when I, like I said, he has the mentality of a seven-year-old. So that's a big world to him, you know? Um, and he's a really sweet kid. Um, so, but it was really cool because my brother, he went to middle school with him. And all through middle school, he would say hi to him, and it would just make him so happy. And he would include him with his friends. So I think that's like a really nice thing. Um, there's constant uh, discrimination for people with disorders everywhere, whether we realize it or not. It all starts with the word. Um, considering the past and the present, uh, what is the future going to be like, considering like the treatments from the past? They still believe in even like electric shock therapies. Like They still do like all these crazy things, even though we don't think they do. Some people believe in them. Um, but um, I believe that we should like try to make things better. Um, and what if it was you? What if it was you who was the person with the disorder? You know, how would you feel about that? And we talked about some history, how it progressed over time, how disorders are portrayed today, how we don't realize what we say may affect other people, and the past and the present and the prediction of the future. The end, and my recap, this is my recap. Uh, um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment. Thank you.